Welcome to Medical Talk Show. Today we have Dr. Kaushik Sharma with us to our consultant neurologist to speak about renal cafe that is kidney stone. So welcome sir. Hello Shinidhi and uh, hi viewers, myself Dr. Kaushik Sharma and I am a consultant neurologist and uh, transplant surgeon at Medical Hospital, Hyderabad. Yes Shinidhi. So sir, generally why do stones occur? Uh, it's an important question to understand why stones occur in the kidneys because uh, this understanding helps us to know how we can prevent the stones. So kidneys are amazing organs in the body. Uh, about 25% of the blood that comes out from the heart reaches the kidney every minute. So it means about 1.2 liters of uh, blood reaches the kidney every minute and roughly about uh, 60 liters of uh, blood flows to the kidneys uh, every hour. So from all the uh, food we eat, the liquids we take and the air we breathe, the required content is kept with the body and the unwanted poisonous toxic content and extra salts that are we consume, they are excreted out from the kidney in the form of urine. So when they go out from the kidney in the form of urine, uh, there are a lot of salts and water that flow to the kidney. So there is a strict balance between the amount of salts and water that flows to the kidney. So in case if there is an increase in the salts or if there is a decrease in the water intake, so the salts come together, they don't get dissolved in the water. In this state, they come together, they aggregate, they sit upon each other and they form something called as crystals. So these crystals are the first stage of stone formation. Even at this point of time when the crystals are formed, if we take good amount of water, they get flushed out from the urine. But at this point of time also, if there is a mismatch and imbalance between the salt and the water intake, if there is a decreased water intake, and yes, these crystals uh, uh, get attached to each other and they form what is called as a stone. So how should one prevent the formation of stones? Uh, the answer to this lies in what we had discussed previously. So it's as simple as it, you need to increase your water intake and you need to decrease your salt intake. Uh, the general dictum that we give to all those uh, adult healthy person is to take about 3 to 3.5 liters of water on an average day. Not just the quantity of water, it's also the pattern of the water intake that's important. As we advise to patients, many patients know uh, they just consume about 2 liters of water in the morning and then they move on to the office, 9 to 6 they take no water at all and again when they come back home, uh, maybe around 6 or 7 pm, they take one more liter of water. So there is a flood in the morning, there is a flood in the evening and there is a drought to the kidneys in between. So this is not the right pattern. Kidneys need to have a very sustained and continuous flow of water. The thing is that in the morning your kidneys are well hydrated, in your evenings they are uh, well hydrated and in between they are in absolute state of dehydration, you are not taking water at all. So not just the quantity of water, the pattern of water intake is also important. So what we advise is that 3 to 3.5 liters taken in the form of about 10 to 12 glasses, spaced one hour or two hour intervals. So you have to take, keep on taking uh, glasses of water two hours apart. That's the ideal way of consuming water. And also, yes, of course, salts, uh, they do cause stones. And yes, in the recent uh, years, uh, with the increase of restraints and with the increase of purchasing power, people have started eating more than what is required. The more, uh, uh, the more uh, fast foods you eat, the more junk food you eat, the more packet food, the more biryanis you eat, all these contain lot of salts and lot of masalas. So all these when they reach the kidney, uh, the, the, the normal recommended allowed salt intake for a healthy adult person is about 4 grams of day. But anyone who is uh, uh, binge eating in restaurants, anyone who is binge eating at home, is found that he is taking about 5 times the recommended salt intake. Maybe around 20 to 25 grams of salt is being consumed on an average day by someone who is binge eating or uh, eating more than what is required. So all these salts, where do they go? They just stand up in your kidney, they cause uh, kidney stones. Right? Apart from the salt intake, the other uh, you know dietary uh, uh, pattern change that has occurred in the recent years. A lot of non-vegetarian diet. Non-vegetarian has got a lot of uric acid and this uric acid uh, uh, high can lead to uric acid stones. Apart from that, uh, there are diets which are rich in oxalates. Your veggies like tomatoes, spinach, palak and uh, uh, your 
potatoes, all the french fries that you eat, all these contain lot of oxalate content. Chocolate especially, cocoa, all these contain lot of oxalate content. So when oxalate, it reaches our intestine and gets absorbed, it flows to the kidney and it results in the formation of calcium oxalate stones. So cut down on your junk food, cut down on your potatoes, french fries and then uh, come down on your uh, uh, beetroots and uh, tomatoes and palak, yes they cause lot of uh, oxalate stones and increase your water intake. Uh, veggies that are good include carrots and uh, fruits like bananas, bananas they got lot of vitamin B6, B6 is an uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, vitamin that can prevent stones and uh, pineapple, it's rich in specific enzyme which can uh, dissolve the stones. So consume more of pineapples, more of bananas, lot of water, carrots, this is all good for you. And uh, veggies like uh, mushrooms, again they are all uh, high in oxalate, mushrooms are need to be avoided. So this simple dietary change uh, can uh, you know prevent the stones. And of course obesity and uh, uh, lot of uh, saturated fat intake, the more fats you can take, uh, the more hormonal changes that occur, the high chances of dehydration and absolutely again they all land up in stone formation. So this is how you can uh, very simply by changing, modulating your food and water intake you can prevent stones. So what are the general symptoms for a patient with the stones? Uh, kidney stones they have a wide spectrum of symptoms. They can be absolutely painless. Some patients can have a vague, uh, dull, aching back pain. Some patients can have uh, severe, uh, severe pain uh, that can go down from the back down to the groin. So severe that uh, it's kind of sort of the pains that you face during your pregnancy labor. Some patients have recurrent urinary tract infection. Some may have uh, uh, blood passing in the urine. By far, uh, pain in the back, be it vague pain or severe pain, is a common symptom. So these are the symptoms uh, that patients can have with stones. So how do we diagnose kidney stones? Uh, your symptoms can uh, give a clue to what could be running inside. And based on your symptoms, the physician can advise an ultrasound. Ultrasound is a basic investigation. It's a uh, uh, safe, radiation-free investigation. And uh, ultrasound can pick up stones in the kidney and uh, the kidney pipe, the ureter as well, as well as in the bladder. Uh, the, the limitation of ultrasound is that it's, it's, a job, it's a rough estimate of the sound that is reflected from your kidneys and ureter. So it gives a rough estimate whether the stone is there or not, is there any swelling of the kidney, uh, that's it. It can't give the exact size of the stone, it can't give the exact location of the stone. So these particular details are required whether to decide if the patient will go for the surgery or they can manage him without the surgery. So for this further additional information, we do something called as a plain CT scan of the abdomen. CT scan gives you absolute uh, crystal clear information of what's lying inside your kidney. The exact location of the stone, the exact size of the stone and its relation to the surrounding uh, structures also can be given by the CT scan. So ultrasound CT or what we do presently, previously x-rays were done but uh, x-rays you know they don't pick up many stones. Not all stones are seen in the x-rays. So, uh, we rely mainly on ultrasound as well as the CT scan. Okay, so how do we treat the kidney stones? Uh, before we go for treatment, I would like to emphasize again on prevention is always better than cure. Just a glass of water can keep you away from the doctor. Previously it was an apple and now it's a glass of water that can uh, prevent you from stones and keep you away from the doctor. Right? And uh, once you diagnose yourself with a uh, stone, uh, next comes the size of the stone. Many people uh, tend to uh, be under the wrong notion that I have got a very small stone. So what I want to impress upon you is that it's not the size of the stone that is important. Even a 5 mm, 6 mm stone that is lying in the urine pipe that is the ureter can cause very excruciating and severe pain. And if it comes and sits and blocks the urine uh, pipe that is the ureter, then it can cause a lot of uh, 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 dynamic changes, it can cause swelling of the kidney and uh, severe pain and at times it can cause infection as well. So what you need to appreciate here is that it's not always the size of the stone that determines whether you need to go for this uh, intervention or not. It depends on the location, it depends on the shape, it depends on the uh, 
the content of the stone as well. All these factors together taken, they decide whether what to do for the, uh, uh, treat, how to treat the patient. And yes, we have got two options: either to do a surgery or to manage the patient with medicines. Small stones about uh, uh, six mm. Uh, if there is a kidney, they can be absolutely managed with stones that can dissolve the uh, uh, medicines that can dissolve the stones. But the same stone, if it is a urine pipe, then the chances of it passing out is unlikely. So here again, size plays a significant role. Stones less than seven mm, there is a good chance that they can follow. We can put them on some medicines which can uh, open up the ureter and allow the stones to pass out. But stones more than 7 mm, 8 mm in size, they are unlikely. The chance of uh, passing out spontaneously without any intervention comes down significantly. So these are the patients who require an intervention. And these are the patients who require a surgery. And uh, when you think of the word surgery, it's not the conventional surgery that you do uh, in the movies what you see. Urology has advanced so much. We've got amazing laser technology. We've got scopes uh, uh, that enter your body just to your natural urinary passage. There is no need to put a cut, there is no pain at all. You just enter the urinary passage and you have got fibers of uh, laser which are as thin as your hair. It's amazing technology, laser is amazing technology. So for smaller stones, we go to the natural urine passage and then we target the stone, focus the laser and uh, we just simply powder the stone and uh, uh, expel it out. These are for the stones that are in the ureter and the stones which are smaller in size. Laser can handle them without any scar, without any cut, without any pain. For the stones that are quite big in size and uh, stones that are resting in the kidney, there is one more operation called as PCNL. It's a, uh, a small one centimeter cut we give on your skin and go to the kidney and then again we focus the laser or we use something called as a jackhammer or a, a lithotripter and then break the stone and remove the uh, stone fragments. So, uh, based on the stone size, based on the stone location, we can uh, uh, decide which, which treatment to offer for the patient and uh, uh, just don't get carried away by the size of the stone and uh, don't neglect your treatment. Consult your physician, consult your urologist, get an ultrasound and CT scan done and uh, that gives a better idea what to do with that stone. Thank you so thank you for giving us your valuable time. Yes, uh, it's my pleasure and uh, once again before we conclude, uh, uh, the same saying it goes, a glass of water keeps your doctor and stones away. Anytime don't hesitate to take a glass of water, keep taking, I have seen patients who hesitate to drink water just because they have, they have to go to the washroom and pee. Uh, 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 software employees, school students, they have come to me, they say that I, I, I have uh, a problem in, uh, in between in between the, in between the office halls and school halls to go and pee. So in the uh, you know uh, thought of peeing, they have stopped drinking water. So your uh, in your uh, misconceptions and your wrong notions and your hesitations, you are buying stones. So uh, have plenty of water, have healthy food, home food, only have. The, the quantity of food that is required, it, should, it, it can be either vegetarian or non-vegetarian, either of these can be, you have to be reductarian, that is only the quantity that is required for you has to be taken, not more, not less, that's it, thank you.